The prosecution called up Robert Kotelis. He's the forensic lab leader, a.k.a. He said he also had another title of a crime scene supervisor. He was called on scene to the high school immediately following the event. So let's listen to his testimony. I'd like to direct your attention now to November the 30th of 2021. Do you recall that day? Yes, I do. Okay, were you working that day? Yes, I was. In what capacity were you working then? Uh, I was actually in the lab uh, working on my lady print work. Okay. 12.51 um, in the afternoon, November the 30th, do you recall what happened? Yes, I do. All right. And were you notified of the attack at the Oxford High School? Yes, I received notification at 1.15 p.m. on that day to respond to the school. Okay. And what was your purpose for responding to the school? Um, I was the on-call crime scene investigator for that day. Um, so it was me to lead my team up to the, the Oxford High School for crime scene processing. You said your team, is that you and the uh, six individuals? Yes, and at that time there was eight. Um, I had recruited a biologist to assist us and also a laboratory technician. Okay, so what sort of uh, specialties are these individuals involved in that are on your crime scene team? Um, they're members of our uh, forensic laboratory in the firearms unit, in the latent print unit, along with the biology unit. So is it fair to say that you were called to the Oxford High School to process the scene? That is correct. Um, what's the first thing you do when you arrive on scene to process? Um, well, we were pretty much on standby because there was, it was still an active scene. They were still getting intel, um, meaning my cohorts at the sheriff's office, of what had happened in there, clearing rooms, clearing the entire building. Um, I didn't actually get in the building. Um, I shouldn't say. I got in the building while it was still daylight to collect um, a firearm that was asked upon me. Um, as far as crime scene processing, it was well into the night. Um, when I actually got to walk through the scene to see what I was dealing with. Okay, now the firearm, that would have been the 6 hour 9 millimeter. That is correct. Okay. Now, I believe we have a stipulation. I'm just going to, for the record, that's Exhibit 403, uh, Forensic Laboratory Report, request number 6, confirming that was in fact the murder weapon from November the 30th. No objection. Yes. 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 Pre is it previously uh, Not previously <coughs> made, but, but stipulated to. Yes, sir. That's 403. Thank you. Three. Okay, so sir, after you you went inside the school to collect the firearm, what happened next? Um, pretty much sat in my vehicle waiting on um, the AOK -okay to go into the school, meaning that it was safe for us to go in and process the crime scene. Okay, so once you're given that green light, what do you do first? Um, I met with um, Sergeant Zadrowski, and we went through, there was me and one other individual, Rachel Grace, um, and members of the Special Investigation Unit that went through um, the, the crime scene itself to see what kind of evidence and what we were looking at within the crime scene. Okay, so would you call this sort of an initial walkthrough? That would be a good terminology. Okay, so once you do the initial walkthrough, what's your process then? Um, to go and report back to my team, um, to construct that team of what um, Kind of services I needed from each one of them, kind of delegated out each of their jobs they needed to do, um, and the chronological order that we were going to complete those tasks. Okay, so what was your decision then on that day? As far as for each person? Well, what, you you walked through the crime scene, you had a feel for what you were looking at as far as um, crime scene uh, process. So, what steps did you take next? Um, after the initial walkthrough, photographs were taken. After photographs were taken, then what we have, um, what we call a 3D scanner. So it takes a, um, a 3D scan um, of the, the crime scene itself um, to document exactly where items of evidence and um, the bodies were located within the scene. Okay, so sir, why is it important to you as a, a professional in this subset of law enforcement to document things as you see them? Um, so that we can keep the integrity of where they were located when I actually saw them at that time. So I'm going to walk through just a small portion of the photographs with you. Um, in some of these photographs, we'll see yellow uh, numbers, or yellow placards on the ground with numbers. What are those? Um, they signify pieces of evidence that were found within the crime scene. Okay. And when you process a crime scene, do you write a report afterwards? Yes, I do. Okay. And did you in this particular case? Yes, I did. May I approach, Sure. 
Just confirm, sir, this is People's Proposal 11. Confirm that is, in fact, the report that you have authored in this particular case. Yes, it is. Okay. People move to mid 11. No objection. 11 is admitted. And, sir, when is it that you write this report? Um, at a later date after I had cleared the crime scene. Um, after uh, the, all the documentation was done, had the crime scene and then back at the laboratory, and then taking my notes and then constructing a formal report at that time. Okay. And, and why do you do so? Why is it important to do so? Um, to kind of paint a picture of what I saw that day so that other people can hear and see what I experienced and saw that day. Okay. And you mentioned photographs are taken and the, the evidence placards are put on the ground next to pieces of evidence. Do you also draw a sketch? Yes, I, um, a sketch was um, not prepared, but what we used was um, a schematic blueprint of the school because of the vast nature of the school. Um, trying to get several rooms within one eight and a half by 11 piece of paper was virtually impossible. So we used a schematic to designate where the um, items of evidence were found within that school. Okay, sir. I'm going to direct your attention to the screen here. This is People's 10. I don't believe there's an objection to the admission of this exhibit. No this objection. This wasn't admitted already? Uh, not yet, Judge. Okay. This is People's oh, you 10. Have no, objection. no objection. 10 is admitted. Okay, so this is um, the blueprint, at least the portion of the 200 hallway where the shooting occurred. Is that right? Yes, it's the entire school, the lower level there, but you can see the blue markings, our pen marks, they were signifying the items of evidence that were found within this crime scene. So these pen marks, these are actually your pen marks, your, your notations? Not me personally. Um, some of them are, but I worked with Rob Charlton, who was my, uh, he took measurements and then he prepared the schematic along with me of where the items of evidence were found outside the classrooms. Okay, fair enough. Now, the Oxford High School has numbered hallways, and each room, classroom, has a number associated to it. Would that be correct? That is correct. Okay. And in the course of your reconstruction of this crime scene, were you able to re reconstruct the path that the shooter took during the shooting? Um, yes, I was. Okay. So first, this is still People's 10. This is a, a zoomed-in portion. Um, this depicts the 200 hallway, and we see rooms 258 and 256 with a bathroom adjacent to 250, is that right? That is correct. Okay, so um, tell us, sir, why is this portion of 200 hallway significant to you as a crime scene investigator? Um, there were two victims that were found between rooms 258 and 256, along with a vast number of uh, pieces of evidence. Okay, and then this is still people's 10. This is just a zoomed in portion of the remainder of the 200 hallway after the, um, the hallway turns and I take it that pieces of evidence were recovered in this hallway as well? That is correct, along with one of the other uh, additional victims was found in a patrol car um, that was found just outside of the, the school. Okay. Well, sir, um, were you able to tell, or did you subsequently find out where the shooter was directly before he began the shooting? Um, yes, I was given information that he was in the bathroom found just west of 258. Um, in the 200 wing. So that would be the bathroom at the top of the screen there? Yes, if you, if you can see the numbers, it's um, by six and seven. He picked up the top of the zoomed in portion of the, the photograph. Okay. I'm gonna show you people's 12. I don't believe there's an objection to this. No objection. 12 is in the And sir, what do we see here in this photograph? Um, this is a, uh, the inside of the bathroom, inside of one of the stalls. Uh, one of the bathroom we're talking about um, Near 258 were a backpack, electric, electronic devices, um, a journal, and yeah, I believe it was a Gatorade bottle, amongst other miscellaneous items. Okay. It was later confirmed that these were the belongings of the shooter in this case. That is correct. Okay. Um, Judge, the next photograph is Exhibit 13. I asked the court and instructed me not to film. I'm going to request that the media not film this picture. Audio 2. Um, I don't think that there's not a problem with the audio. No, 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 just just video, please. And still, no still or, or audio, video. Okay, thank you. Now, in the course of your crime scene investigation, <coughs> the photographs 
<laughs> You've seen these photographs before, is that right? That is correct. Okay. And these photographs fairly depict the, the path that the shooter took during the attack in Oxford High School? That is correct. Okay. So this is the bathroom adjacent to 258. People's 13. What are we looking at here? Um, this is a photograph taken just outside of that bathroom, showing down the hallway where 258 and 256 would be found on the left-hand side of this photograph. And you can start to see the evidence placards on the right-hand side um, with one of the victims lying on the ground on the right-hand side of the photograph. Okay, so for the record, that's Hannah St. Juliana, and she's on the ground to the right side of the hallway. Is that right? That is correct. And further up in the photograph, um, there's another victim, and that's Madison Baldwin? That is correct. Now, sir, tell us, please, what you recovered of evidentiary value in crime scene analysis in this portion of the 200 hallway. Um, they're what we call fired cartridge cases um, and also fired bullets. So the fired cartridge cases will hold the actual unfired bullet in a semi-automatic semi weapon. The fired cartridge case is ejected out of the side of the weapon, which is typically out of the right side of the weapon. The bullet is expelled out of the barrel or the end of the weapon. Um, in the direction where that fire was pointed. So sometimes I refer to them as shell casings. Is that an appropriate term or should I use that? Uh, I mean, I think it's, you can be used interchangeably. Um, okay. a, shell ca a fired shell casing or a fired cartridge case. Okay. And how many of those fired shell casings did you recover in this portion of the 200 hallway? There were 14. So every time that someone pulls the trigger of a loaded semi-automatic weapon, it ejects a fired shell casing? That is correct. Okay. So with 14 fired shell casings in this portion of the hallway, what does that indicate to you is the number of shots fired? That there would have been 14 within this area. This is exhibit 14. This is still a portion of um, the 200 hallway before it turns, is that right? That is correct. Okay. And what do we see here in the screen? Um, you can see a, a few more. Um, of the yellow placards that are indicating the evidence that was found in that area before we get to the turn, um, you know, heading uh, back uh, away from 258 and 256. Okay, so this is Exhibit 15. Is this continuing down the path? So we saw on the map that the 200 hallway turns right outside 256. That is correct. Then I would move to the left or I believe it's north at that point in time. Okay, so is this picture then oriented down the long hallway of 200? Yes, it is. Okay, and what do we see here? Um, once again, it's fired, uh, there's evidence um, that's marked by the yellow placards indicating the fired cartridge cases and fired bullets um, along with a firearm magazine or a gun magazine that was located um, in this area of the hallway. Okay, this is exhibit 16. Now, now I'm directed specifically to placard 35 there, um, in the lower middle portion of the screen. You mentioned a magazine, what is that? Um, so a semi-automatic weapon a gun magazine will hold those cartridges or the, the, the fire cartridge cases and bullets that are put together in the typically the bottom of the weapon and that loads the gun to be chambered, to have a round chamber to actually um, use that weapon. Okay. Now how many fired shell casings did you recover from the long portion here at the 200 hallway? There were 18 fire cartridge cases. Now, did you also uncover evidence that the shooter fired into classrooms as well? Yes, I did. This is Exhibit 17. This is a picture of what? Um, this is from the outside of room 247. And if you see, in the, it's in the middle of the picture. There's a pink uh, rod we call trajectory rod. And that is to indicate um, where the shot was fired from and into. Um, so the shot was fired from the exterior of 247 to the interior room 247. Okay. This is people's 18. What are we looking at here? Um, another uh, photograph from the outside of this is room 244. Once again, as you can see a pink trajectory rod indicating um, that this bullet had traveled through the glass um, along with the, the 244 placard um, of um, this classroom 244. Okay. Uh, not already. People move to 17, 16, 17, 18, Judge. No objection. 16 and 17 and 18 are admitted. Thank you, Judge. Your Honor, I'm not sure if 14 and 15 were, but I have no objection. Thank you. 14 and 15 are admitted. This is uh, people's eight. This has already been admitted. 
This is room 224, and Molly Darnell had already testified in this trial that this was the classroom she was in. But what do we see in this photograph here? Uh, once again, a photograph taken from the outside of room 224. And in this picture, you can see that there are three um, tra trajectory rods that were into the door um, of this room, indicating that uh, bullets were fired from outside of the classroom to the inside. Okay. And this is people's six, again, already admitted. This is the same classroom, 224. What do we see in this particular photograph? Um, on the left-hand side, you can see it's the inside of the door with the same three um, trajectory rods just from the inside. And then in the back of the room, there is what we call a perforation in the window. So a bullet more than likely traveled through that window, uh, perforated the window, and we were never able to locate that um, bullet. Okay. Um, but that was one of them. And what about the placard right here in the middle? There is a fired bullet that was found in the bookcase. It was found lodged in one of the books on that bookcase. Okay, and then we see this defect in the file cabinet here? That is correct. That would be a ricochet or a defect that was more than likely caused by a fired projectile or a fired bullet. <clears throat> this is People's 19. Sir, do you recognize this photograph? Uh, yes, I do. And what is this photograph to fit? Um, this is a photograph of the inside of um, I'm sorry, from the outside of room 223, um, but you can see that there is a, a ricochet or a defect that's found in the door, um, and this is what we call a, a bullet that was in, in flight and it was tumbling, and it come into contact with something else because it's not a circular pattern like we saw in the other ones. Okay, people move to admit 19. No objection. This is exhibit 20. This is um, room 220. What do we see here? Uh, once again, a photograph taken from the outside of the classroom, 220. Um, you can see that there's one trajectory rod in the, the door of the room. This is Exhibit 21. Uh, people move to admit 20. No objection. 20 is admitted. And this is People's 21. What do we see here, sir? Uh, photograph taken from the outside of room 215. And you can see there's the trajectory rods. They have to be orange in color this time um, into the window um, found right below the number 215 showing the path of travel of the bullets that were fired into that classroom. Okay, so the fact that they're orange instead of pink, does that have any significance? No, we just ran out of pink. Okay. Um, judge, I'd ask the court to instruct the camera not to film the next photograph. Yeah, we're, we're going to um, be putting uh, exhibit number 22 on the screen. I'm going to ask that it not be videotaped and also that there not be any still pictures taken. Right? Or is it off right now? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Judge. People move to mid 21. Okay. This is People's 22, sir. This has already been admitted. What are we looking at here? Um, the photograph taken from uh, the outside of the a bathroom that was found across from room 231, class of 231. Um, in this photograph, you can see that there is a large amount of blood along with a backpack on the floor that's found mm -hmm. just inside of the bathroom, along with some other evidence that was uh, marked. Um, I believe it's a, uh, a cartridge that was found outside of the bathroom that was marked 49. Okay. And sir, this is the bathroom where Justin Schilling was killed? That is correct. This is People's 23. What do we see here? Um, 22 was previously um, admitted. Thank you, Judge. Um, this is a photograph of the firearm that was um, collected by the deputies on scene. Okay. And may I approach the witness? Sure. This has already been admitted as 403. Um, sir, just to confirm. That's the firearm that you were called into the school to recover um, and to uh, take back to the Oakland County Forensic Laboratory. The recording hand is, is authored by Mr. Charlton. Correct, right? yes. Okay. Yeah, I just want to make sure. Of, yeah. Um, so, yeah, it looks like there is a two fire bullets that were asked to um, be um, compared against the firearm. Okay, and, and according to that report, the firearm depicted here in People's 23 was the firearm used in the Oxford High School attack on November the 30th, 2021? That is correct. Okay. Um, sir, in your crime scene processing of the Oxford High School, how many times was that gun shot inside the high school? 32 times. 
Your Honor, I just want to make sure 32 is it, or I'm sorry, 23 is admitted. Yeah, 23. I have no objection to it. Okay. That has to be admitted. <coughs> 23 is admitted. 23 is admitted. Yes. Thank you, Judge. I've got the proof. You have nothing for me? Yes, Judge. Thank you. Cross? Uh, we have no questions. Thank you. Once again, thank you for watching. I'll be back very soon with more testimony from the Jennifer Crumbly trial.